Father, we thank you for your word that's always alive and active, always. <laughs> God, thank you for that. We just submit to you tonight. We submit to your word. God, we just ask for revelation to open up scripture to each one of us in a brand new way. Scriptures that we've read and we're familiar with. But God, that you'll just shine a light of revelation in our hearts and awaken us, God, to, to walk in the spirit the way that you've desired us to walk into, walk in with. So, Father, we bless you tonight. And God, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, the whole purpose of tonight, I was going back and forth if I wanted to live stream it or not, but there's a couple people that asked to live stream, which uh, obviously I said yes, so we're doing that right now. Um, some of the reason why I didn't want to, because I'm going to ask a question here in the beginning that I want to have some dialogue with, and obviously during ministry times it would be dead spots on the mic, which would be a little weird for someone watching, not being able to hear responses and such. So I'm going to try and do it in such a way where the teaching can be done in one spot, and then we'll say goodnight to live stream and hello to live stream, uh, you know, and then do the ministry time here within, within the church that's here. So tonight I want to start off with, this is the intro into walking in the Spirit, and that's been probably one of the, one of the, not the, but one of the most asked questions I've had in 15 years of ministry, 16 years of ministry, with Rachel is, is how do you do that? How do you walk in the Spirit? So, we're, so what we're going to do is, it's not some crazy far out there thing. Uh, we're going to put some scriptures down. We're going to read some scriptures together. And tonight's going to be kind of more at the end, the ministry time, so to speak. It's going to be more of a discussion type. So we want feedback and kind of that home group feel, even though we're in a church. And then we're going to be going over different topics, uh, which I'll get to in a second because I want to explain something with that. So let's, if you have your Bibles, let's open. Tonight's just the intro into walking in the Spirit. Let's open to Romans 8, 18 to 23. And it's a, it's a bulk of Scripture there, obviously. But there's one key part that I want to focus in on before we go into this that's really going to set the groundwork for and ask uh, an obvious question. And as you guys are turning there, I'm just going to remind you of the story that I had, um, that you've heard me say. Uh, when I was growing up, I was... I don't know if blessed is the right word or not, but I didn't grow up in a single denomination. My parents went to, I can remember off the top of my head, three or four different churches that I went to, different denominations. I think one was Baptist, I'm not sure, but Pentecostal, uh, Foursquare, and then I forget what the other one was. Doesn't matter. But because of that, I didn't, I didn't have one way of, of doctrine put in. And so I remember, and you guys will remember the story, I said about a year ago, I remember I was reading my Bible and my pastor at the time had asked me to do a men's study for young men. I was 19 out of the book of Acts. And out of the book of Acts, I don't know, it's an interesting book to try and do a men's st study out of because it's more of the Acts of the Apostles. But anyways, I, I, I fell upon Miracle Signs and Wonders, if you remember the story. And I asked him, can you teach me this? I want to know this. It's in the Bible. And he got mad and literally slammed his fist down on the table or on his desk and said, we don't teach that here. If you want to learn that, you've got to go somewhere else. And I remember I was so shocked because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, it's in the Bible, man. Like, it's here. It's right here. Like, how do you, and it was shortly after that, I was released from that church. So, but I just kind of want to go into some of these things in Scripture that we read and kind of shine a light on it. Because walking in the Spirit is not some Christian form of voodoo. It's, it's not weird. It's not supposed to be funky. It's supposed to just flow. Like you're one with the Father. The Father gave his spirit to you. And so out of that unity, out of that relationship with God, with the Father, you're going to walk in things of his nature that flow from the spirit just because you're one, right? Jesus in the garden. Lord, Father, make them one as we are one. What makes us one with the Father? Because I'm, I'm, we're not up in heaven right now, literally one with him. It's the spirit of God that we've been given. And so out of that, there's going to be certain fruit, uh, Galatians, fruit of the Spirit, but all other things that are going to come with that. So let's just read here. Romans 8 doesn't fully uh, go where I want it, like with, with the go, is it scripture? It, it's not fully in line with the part of tonight, but there's a verse that I want to ask a question of us all, but I need it in context. So let's start at 18. For I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the coming glory to be revealed in us. For the creation, for the creation eagerly awaits the revelation of the sons and, and daughters, but sons of God. For creation was subjected uh, to fertility, not willingly, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will also be set free from bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans together and suffers birth pains until now. And not only creation, 
but even ourselves, we ourselves, this is a line I want to focus on, we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we eagerly wait adoption, the redemption of our body. So there's going to be a time that all things are made new, even creation's groaning for the full revealing. We've obviously, we're sons and daughters of God, and we're growing into that, that, that identity, growing into that perfection that will happen at the return of Christ. But even creation itself is groaning for the return of the sons of God, going back to Adam, because Adam gave, the Lord gave Adam dominion over the earth, and it was out of that righteous place. So a righteous rule the earth wants, right? But that's not going to be fully complete until you and I are on the shores of eternity. But at that time, it says something here. What do we have? The first fruits of the Spirit. So my question here is, in live stream, you won't be able to hear answers. So answer in your own head as well, or out loud, however you want to do it in front of your computer. But what should it look like right now to have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit? Let's just think about that. What does it look like? What should our lives look Rebellious ones over on the right side. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. No, go on. Yeah, I did, but it's okay. I don't think you're in the room. You get a pass. You're my wife. But uh, um, anyway, so what should it look like? Like, let's, you know, what should it look like to have the first fruits of the Spirit? And we, you may not have an answer, but let's just think about that for a moment, right? To live more Christ-like. To live more Christ-like. Yep, absolutely. Because that's really the only way we can live in the fullness of Christ, because we cannot accomplish the things of God in our own strength. So D said to live more Christ-like. Absolutely. And, and living more Christ-like is going to mimic the actions, the words and actions that Jesus lived here on the earth. But we know, that's the perfect answer to you, that the words and actions that Jesus spoke here on the earth, he made it quite clear that he did nothing and said nothing that was of himself. Right? And so in the same way, we got to learn how to walk and live in that same type of environment. What's another thing? What, what does it look like with the Holy Spirit with us? Promise of God. His presence never leaves us. When Jesus said, I'm never going to leave you, promise, you, I'm with you to the very end of the age. What's that going to look like? I'm, how is he, I mean, he's seated in heaven, so how is, he, how is he always with us? Holy Spirit of God, right? Well, another thing, and you throw out answers too. What's another thing that, that we have right now that the first fruits of the Spirit, which we're going to talk about tonight? We have the first fruits of the Spirit, and a part of receiving the first fruits of the Spirit is the distribution of gifts by the Holy Spirit. So in that first fruits that we have, there's going to be gifts that are given. Not all of us are going to prophesy, even though Paul does say, I desire you pursue prophecy, which makes me assume that all of us have the ability to. But not all of us are going to, which we're going to get into in a second. There's gifts in, in Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12. You know, there's gifts that we have that maybe not all of us will walk in, but we can touch different parts, and that's the function of the body. But the Holy Spirit is giving it. Anything else off the top of your head? What does it look like to have the, the first fruits of the Spirit? Yeah, yeah, he was reading verse 12 for those on live stream. Exactly. So that, that comes to that, that verse right there, that last line, you shall live, fulfills the words of Christ that he says, I have come that you may have life and life abundantly. Right, right. So there's, and, and are we, you know, that's, that's the struggle here on earth because even it says, I think it says right here, that even our bodies grown, we ourselves grown, right? So we're in this thing. Let's just use this, this last two years. Not that you want to glorify the bit of it, but there's, there's been a heavy emotion. There's been more fear than ever than I've seen in my lifetime, more anger than I've seen in my lifetime. Let's go back to election stuff. So you got more anger, more fear than I've ever seen in my, my personal lifetime in that, in that respect. And you're sitting there, and you're seeing a lot of people defeated. Like, have you ever noticed? I don't know if you guys notice. I notice this. I notice it all the time. When you're driving, do you ever notice the average face of the person in the car next to you? It's not happy. It's very rarely is it happy. Tonight, actually, uh, when I, I was driving with my kids back from picking up Adelaide, and there was one guy smiling, and it was so different that Justice even said to me, oh, that guy is thinking about something happy. And I said, he sure is, but you don't normally see that. It's normally, get on my way. Right? I don't want to talk to you. Don't look in my window. <laughs> Fog it up, right? <laughs> so, but first, so the Spirit, 
Joel chapter 2, let's think about this, and we're not going to go in. What's another part of the first fruits of the Spirit? Joel 2 says, in those days, in those last days, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. All flesh, not some, not selected ones. And not in those days I'll pour out my Spirit only on the apostles. Your sons and daughters, what will they do? They'll prophesy. Your young men will, or your, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions, right? So that's a part of that. So if we're walking... Even in the first fruits of the Spirit, because we know that's coming, that's a prophetic word. And if we're not dealing with any of that, then we're not walking in it at all. Well, no. We're not walking in what we should be walking in. Let me rephrase that, because we are walking in the Spirit. I take that back. Right? So the, what else with the Holy Spirit? We also uh, have the ability to understand with deeper revelation uh, who the Lord is. Right? The Bible says, who understands the deepest parts of a man or woman except his own spirit or her spirit? You have the Spirit of God. That's a deep verse. Think about the depth of that verse. He is basically declaring to you that you have the ability to know the deepest parts of God. Right? That's amazing. He wants us to know him and then supernatural wisdom, helping us make life decisions. So let's, with all that being said now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. And like I said, tonight is going to be more of a teaching and then it's going to be more interactive and other stuff. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. We know it well. Let's just start at verse 1. Let me say this, because I don't think... Let me just check so I don't get ahead of myself. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. After the gifts, if you notice where the gifts end, let's just take a pause there, because we go, oh, look. So verse 11. So look after verse 11. What section after the gifts does Paul decide to go to? In your script, in your book there. Where does he, in your book, in the Bible. Where does he go next? Into the unity of the body. So he's leading up with these gifts that we're about to learn about. And then he talks about the diversity of the body, how that we're one body with many parts, many believers. And so what do you think the whole point of this chapter is? Which we're going to unpack the gift parts here in a second. But he's saying, hey, there's gifts that are to be had for all believers. Some will have different, which we're going to read here in a second. We're going to go into that. But he announces that there's gifts, and then immediately following the gifts, he goes straight into the revelation that we, we are many parts but one body, the body of Christ. So what he is saying here, that the body of Christ should be displaying these gifts, not just the pastor, not just the leader, it's for the body. We're going to, this Sunday is, is when you want to hear because we're going to be talking about why we believe that we can pray for the sick and see them healed. And what happens, how are we to process that in our head when it doesn't happen, right? And stuff like that. So we're going to be going into that. But let's go into here. So let's start 1 Corinthians 12.1. He says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant, right? I think it's safe to say, and I'm not saying this in, as an insulting way, but I believe the church at large is ignorant to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? And that's a big, that's a big deal. So the Greek word for spiritual gifts, it says now concerning spiritual gifts, is actually, and, I, and, and uh, it actually means spiritual realities. Another popular translation for that, that does word for word on meaning, is Holman translation, which states now concerning what comes from the Spirit. And the reason why we have spiritual gifts there is not, uh, in most translations, is not a, a, a wrong translation, but it's implied. Because right going down here, he talks about spiritual gifts. It's a, a, few, a few verses after. But the actual translation, there's not actually the word gift at all. There's no gift in any of that meaning of the Greek word. It is actually saying to each... Um, I lost my word. Oh, yeah, spiritual realities or concerning things of the Spirit. So now concerning things of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, or now concerning spiritual realities, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. So he's going into that. So that's something to declare, right? Uh, so let's keep on going down that we know that. So he, Paul's telling the church right here, I do not want you to be ignorant of spiritual realities or spiritual things. Let's go to verse 7. But to each person... Which is key. When he says each person, let's pause there. I know I'll probably just read the whole verse, but Paul's writing to who? Leaders of the churches of Corinth to read to the congregations, right? To tell to the people. So he's making it quite clear. He does not say to each one of you leaders, because these, ver these letters were supposed to be what? The leaders would get them from Paul. If I was one of the leaders of the church of Corinth, what would my responsibility be if I held in my hand the letters of Paul? 
to read them to the church, right? So to each person here is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the benefit of all. Another way to say that, another translation, a demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person to produce what is beneficial. So you and I have been given a, uh, a manifestation of the Spirit or a demonstration of the Spirit, I like how both those are worded, to produce something beneficial. So that's what we're there for. That's what, it's, that's what we're here for. So we have, this, we have the Holy Spirit, and we're going to find out He distributes the gifts right here in just a second. But it's... But it's uh, that we is quite clear that we are personally blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit working and living in us. Others as well, right? The Holy Spirit works and lives in us. Why? So we can benefit. That's what it says, the benefit of all. So obviously I'm going to be there, and, and if, if I, like for example, gifts of wisdom or revelation, understanding the Lord, that's going to benefit me. But if it's also going to benefit my wife or vice versa when Rachel's reading something in, in and the Holy Spirit illuminates something in her mind, and she's like, Jeremy, this is what I studied, because we grow together. There's benefit for all. If I'm walking in the Spirit, and I get a prophetic word, and I share it to uh, whatever Alan, and I'm sitting there, and he's encouraged, number one, I'm benefiting from it, because I'm flowing by the Holy Spirit, but number two, he's just received a word of the Lord, and now he's going to benefit from it. Same with healing. If someone's healed in front of us, right? The benefit is for that person that's healed, but it's also for us, because it increases our faith to see miracle signs and wonders, because we prayed for the sick, and they're healed. Right, so just keep on going with that. Uh, we're going to see here that the Holy Spirit distributes the Holy Spirit, but let's just go. Let's keep on going. Let's go to eight. So now he talks about the manifestation of the Spirit here. For example, he said, the Spirit gives to one the gift of the word of wisdom; to another, the same Spirit gives the gift of revelation knowledge; and to another, the Spirit gives the gift of faith. And to another, the Spirit gives a gift of healing. So I'm going to read until 11. And to another, the power to work miracles. To another, the gift of prophecy. To discern what the Spirit is speaking. The gift of speaking in different types of tongues. And the gift of interpretation of tongues. Remember, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these gifts as he chooses for each believer. So that's what I'm saying. Not all of us. I believe here, and this is Jeremy's only belief, so I don't want to say preach it like it's scripture, but I believe that if I'm in a situation where I need one of these gifts, I believe that the Holy Spirit will be there to help me walk in it. I really do. I believe that each one of us can have the ability to pray and see the sick healed, but there's some that will be given the gift of healing, which it says there in verse 9. Some of them will walk more fluently or easily. I don't know if that's a good word for it, but it will be more activated in their life. Some of the prophetic, right? There's one of these things in here that I have no I have never been able to touch or understand personally, but I know it's there because Scripture says it's there, is the interpretation of tongues. I've heard people speak in tongues. Rachel and I have prayer languages, but I've never, ever been able to. If someone says, Jeremy, can you interpret? I mean, I've, I've prayed until my face is blue. I've never been able to get anything. But, but I know it's a gift. So just because I haven't walked in it. Oh, good. Well, good. Oh, good. Yeah. So Rachel, so, but, oh, yeah. 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 Well, here comes it on the, oh. Feel fancy. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment on that. Um, the very first time I was in a setting where someone was speaking in tongues, not so much their prayer language, but publicly, I turned to my friend and said, do you understand what they're saying? And she was like, no, because I knew what they were saying. And I thought in that moment, it was, it sounds so silly now, but in that moment, I thought, well, everybody knows because that's what we're praying about right now. But it was, and it, for me, I think it was the Lord confirming because he knew I needed that in that moment. <laughs> he knew that it was a stretch for me. So all of that to say, I feel like that even backs up the point you were just saying of, I don't have the gift of interpretation of tongues, but yet that one time I knew what was being prayed because that's what I needed in the moment. And the Holy Spirit knew that I would have struggled otherwise. So, yes, yeah. awesome. well, thank you for sharing that. Don't go far if you have other things to say. No, seriously. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but that's good, yeah, so, and like I said, but just because we can't walk in it, like, I'm not going to shun that gift just because I haven't experienced it, right? That's, that's very important just, uh, because it's, it's, it's scriptures in the Bible, right? So we need, to, we need to believe it. So let's just, I want to highlight just some of these here. So gift of faith. Let's think about the gift of faith. What's, what's the first inclination you can get with the gift of faith? Faith to believe in Jesus Christ. But, and yes, that, that applies. I'm not saying that doesn't apply. But is this faith right here only talking about the ability to believe in Jesus Christ? 
No. Why? Again, let's think of the setting. He is writing a letter to the church, right? So presumably, maybe not, but majority of people that are sitting there listening to this letter are what? Believers, right? So, what's the, so then the next question would be, if it's not just solely for the purpose of the ability to believe in Jesus Christ, then what's the gift of faith for? To see things and believe. Like when God says, I want to release this over the church, we have people in here that say, hey, Lord, I don't see it yet. I know it's coming. I'm going to grab onto it, if it as if it is so. Right? Gift of faith. And you need to surround yourself with some of those people because if you ever hung out with people that have that walk in that gift of faith, you start walking in it too. It's contagious. Right? It's like, wow, I want to be around those kind of people. Like we say all the time, there's some people who go to lunch. Pastor Peter in our old church used to say, there's some people you go to lunch with, and it's good to have your lunch buddies, but there's some people you go to war with. And when I go to war, I want to make sure that I'm standing next to someone that believes that we can win the fight, right? And that's, and that's just whatever that situation looks like. So right here, is, uh, but it's for, it's for, I believe it's for faith for the words of God to be revealed. I believe that's another part of this. Faith for the word of God, words of God that are spoken to you to be revealed. Uh, to do, and also to do the miraculous works of God here on the earth, right? Because even Jesus says, and it's not, it's not an insult. Some people are like, you can't say that to people. Jesus said to people, and he wasn't insulting them. But when they asked him again, why can we heal? Right? It's because of your lack of faith. I can't expect of Picture anything in this life. If you do not practice and, and apply yourself, and you, don't, and you fall short, and I simply say, well, how come I didn't do it? I'm like, well, you didn't practice. Right? How come I didn't ace that test? Did you study? No. I mean, I'm not rebuking you. It's just a fact, right? So in the same thing, it's that same way. So gifts of healing. What's another gift of healing? We're going to talk more about this on Sunday because we're going to talk about the, our theology, so to speak, on that. But this right here proves that healing is for today. If the gifts stopped at the apostles, then he would not be telling the church that there's a possibility that there's people in this congregation here that are going to walk in the gift of healing, right? Because he's not writing to the apostles, the apostles are all over the place. Some are in Jerusalem. Some are traveling into Asia and all the, you know, up into Turkey and stuff like that, right? So, they're, so he's sitting there and he's saying that there's going to be gifts of healing. So you got to draw, you got to ask yourself. You got to draw a line when it comes to all these gifts right here. If the gifts were only for the apostles, where do you draw the line? And why is Paul trying to impart the belief that you can receive gifts through the power of the Holy Spirit if it was going to be done with the apostles? If it was an apostles-only thing, he would never have been encouraging the, gift, the church in Corinthians to start walking in and pursuing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So then you walk a dangerous line. Well, then, okay, maybe just them. But where does that line stop? Because there's no scripture anywhere in, Bible, in the Bible that says, hey, the gifts went to this generation of believers and ended off. Right? And for the, some strange reason, you can tell it's an attack against the church because when any, whenever anyone walks fully in the gifts of the Spirit, they're always attacked. Always attacked. You can go back, all the way back as John G. Lake, um, Smith Wilgworth, and the girl, at Mariah, at Mrs. Edder, Maria Wordworth Edder, and there's another one in there that was around World War II right before Billy Graham came, the most, one of the most popular evangelists of that time. I forget what her name is now. It slipped my mind. But she even saw, she would hold limbs of babies. They brought a baby, huh? Catherine, Catherine Coleman, right, Catherine Coleman held a baby with no legs and arms and prayed over the baby in front of her. This is recorded stuff. Arms and legs grew, right? But of course, of course, she was attacked, and she was a part of this, and she was a part of that, right? Everyone always attacks these moves of God because you want to shut them down, right? They're, but they're things that you see right in front of your face. But this right here, when he says gifts of healing, it proves that they're for today. The power to work miracles. Again, we have the ability to do this. It's not just talking about about healing. One of my favorite miracle stories is, and I've, I've, uh, Rachel's heard a couple of times, but is a, is a lady named Heidi Baker who's in Africa, and this is just simple. She had, bought, had toys shipped in for boys and girls. She runs in orphanages. Heidi Baker's another one that's seen. She's held dead babies and hugged them and loved them and bring them, and they've come back to life. But she, when she, in this time, she had, I think, dolls for the girls and, and, and balls for the boys for Christmas, but something happened with the shipping, shipment, and only one toy came. And so talk about miracles, and she's like, well, this isn't going to work. I think it was all dolls, and she needed balls for the boys. So she prayed over a bag and opened the bag, and it was balls, right? Miracles, because she needed that moment. Was it a life-changing situation? Did the boys need the ball? Was it live or die? No. But she was there, and she just believed. She said, God, I want this. 
prayed over the prayed over the sack of toys, opened it, and it was balls or whatever the thing is, but a guy toy, right, for the boys, right? So power to work miracles, gifts of prophecy. Prophecy, we know, is for what? The edification of the church, to speak into you and to, and to build up your life, which we're going we're to talk about that later, too, right? To speak the life of the Lord over someone through the Holy Spirit. The gift of prophecy is, is such a really cool honor because you're literally becoming a mouthpiece for the Lord, which is just so cool, right? And then uh, the last part right here is Verse 11, remember, it's the same Holy Spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these gifts as he chooses for each believer. So this means right here, it says, this actual meaning, each believer, is in fact each individual person who belongs to the body of Christ. Which is why the translator, translators apply the word believer, because it's because he's writing to the believers that believe. So if you believe, the Holy Spirit is going to be there. So as a church body, so then we're going to pause there for Corinthians, but then it goes into the body of Christ, many different parts, right? The unity that we're one body on the Lord. So I believe with my whole heart that, uh, that the church body, the church at large, but definitely even our church, as we press in to walk in these types of things, that there's going to be ministry of the Spirit that's going to begin to start popping up within different people of the congregation. And if one thing falls, like whatever, if interpretation of tongues falls, I'm not going to reject it just because I haven't seen it because you and I aren't supposed to all walk in the exact same gift. It says it distributes and activates these gifts he chooses for different, he just, boom, it's different believers. So you and I may walk, but we got to celebrate the gifting in someone else. Just because I'm talking to you here, I'm celebrating the fact that I can stand here and talk to you. And then I'm not, I like to move around a little bit, if you notice. And I, I, so <laughs> I can move this or do whatever I want. I can scratch my head if I'm itchy. Right? Like, like all that stuff. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. In the same way, we all have different gifts. It brings it into the body of Christ. So each one of us here, I believe, to walk fully in the Spirit, you and I, are, we're going to start seeing Act, the gifts of the Holy Spirit activating each one of us goes down to the very first word that we preached to kick off 2022, the image of the Son. Right? That was a prophetic word that was spoken over the church from the least thrasher. Arise, arise, let the image of the Son come forth with authority. Right? The image of the Son. I want to walk in the image of the Son. To D's part, right? To be more like Jesus. To help us live out the actions of Jesus. Let's go to John 4. Let's go. John 4, uh, 23 to 24, we know this one. This is the woman at the well. And he says a very important truth over her, to, to her, sorry, to her. But an hour is coming, and is, it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people as his worshipers. He's seeking people to worship him in spirit and in truth. Right? God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now this verse right here is one of those verses that I could personally, uh, we're all different, not a good or bad thing, we're all different, but I could personally ponder verse 24 for a very long time. Because what's, what's this saying? God is a spirit, so to wor- and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. You and I, just like right now, we're very aware that you and I are dwelling in time, but we know that God is outside of time. In the same way, you and I right now are very, very aware that what I have here is flesh. But God has invited us into a reality to worship him in spirit. And that's so deep. That's like, really, to walk in the spirit is really the final frontier. Forget everything else, right? Like, that's the thing that the church, we're pressing in to understand more about and learn how to walk in and move and breathe and live in that place and walk in that spirit of faith, right? Right? Jesus brought glory to the Father. Oh, yeah, sorry. We know from Romans 12, you don't have to turn there, that our spiritual act of worship is what? To present our bodies as a living sacrifice. To say, Lord, I'm here. I want to burn in your fire. What is God is an all-consuming fire. I want to burn on the altar of sacrifice to you. I want to burn in the consuming fire of who you are. And out of that consuming fire, the gifts are going to start to flow. Uh, Sacrifice of praise. Yep, yep. Flow in that place. Jesus brought glory to the Father by speaking with authority and doing miracles that caused other people to praise the Father. Right? I just love that in the same way. So let's, we're, let's go to Ephesians, and we're going to end there. Then I want to ask a couple questions, and then we'll pray. Justice, we still good up there, bud? Yep. Ephesians 3, thank you, 8 to 12. Ephesians 3. 
This grace was given to me, the least of all the saints, to proclaim to the Gentiles the incalculable riches of the Messiah and to shed light for all about the administration of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. This is so God's multifaceted wisdom may now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realm. Pause right there. However your translation reads it, it doesn't matter. There's a, all we know, that doesn't matter how it's worded, and that there's a wisdom, right? We see that there in verse 10. Every translation is going to have something around the wisdom. And this wisdom is to be made known through the church, through me and you, to where? Rulers and authorities in the heavenlies. So that means if I'm going to show a wisdom that God has placed inside us to spiritual beings, I'm not going to show that wisdom by walking out in the flesh. Let's pause and think about that for a moment. If there's a wisdom that God has placed, that Paul is beginning to preach on, that we are, as a church, to be made known to the principalities and spirits, like it says, rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, I am not going to teach spiritual beings that know, about more t- that know about the flesh and the spirit from being in that realm about spiritual things simply by walking in the flesh. It's impossible. So in order to reveal mysteries to heaven, and what is the beautiful part of that mystery? The beautiful part of that mystery is that God... The creator in heaven breathed life into a man. Flesh became sin. And God was able to redeem something that had sin and place it to a seat of authority above them. That is the mystery. That is the, well, this isn't fair. It doesn't matter. I'm God. Boom. Son, daughter. Bang, bang, bang. Holy Spirit, load them up. Right? That's right. It just blows my mind. So it's awesome. So, so like it's, it's so cool because at one point, like you can hear all this information, but like this is so intimidating. I don't fully understand it. Well, that's what the gift of revelation is for, right? That's what the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And the, it brings new meaning to the verse that you've heard us preach here thousands of times. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings, you and I, royal priesthood, to seek it out. Right? So there's these mysteries that you and I have a mandate to walk in. Let's go, uh, so, uh, yes, okay, so I'm going to, this is, uh, this is so that God's multifaceted wisdom may, may now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. Verse 11 and 12. This is according to his eternal purpose accomplished in the Messiah, Jesus our Lord. In him we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. So we have boldness and confident access to the Father because of Jesus Christ. That's amazing. And again, stuff that we need to ponder. Like if, I, I believe that if David was writing all this stuff, there would be like 50 say laws in these letters. Right? Pause and meditate. Right? Psalms are cool. Prophetic. They speak. They're awesome. I'm all about the Psalms. But there's so many say law moments in the letters that we need to like just, Wow. Ephesians 3.20, last verse, and then we're going to ask some questions and, and cut live stream. Ephesians 3.20-21. 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that is in work, that works in us. Another Selah moment right there. If he can do beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that lives in us. To him be all the glory in Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That word power, and as soon as I say it, you're going to know it because you've probably heard it preached before, is dunamis power. Do you know what dunamis power is for only? The miraculous, is for miraculous power, might, and strength. Dunamis power. It's not just power. Dunamis power. It's the miraculous power of might and strength. Powerful deeds or powerful deeds showing physical power, right? That's, that's what this is talking about. So there's a miraculous power that it works in us, not just hangs out in us, right? The Holy Spirit is more than just a seal that we're sealed until the time the Father says, oh, they're sealed with my Holy Spirit, you're in. No, you and I are clearly called, and I believe this with full conviction, 
that what this is training for reigning, that we are being taught here some principles that are going to take us into the heavenly realms. And, and I was talking with, I think, Dora earlier today. I would love it if Jesus came here, but there's a part of me that's afraid of him to come too soon, not because I'm afraid of my salvation. I know exactly where I'm going. But we get one shot to live here in the flesh. One shot to press in and say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood me. Flood me. I want to know. I want to walk as Jesus walked. And I don't want to hit the, 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 the gates of heaven with regret knowing how I could have lived and didn't. I mean, I know he's not going to kick me out because of that. And as soon as I see him, all pain, sorrow, grief, all that stuff's going to be vanished. But I don't even want a millisecond of, oh, no. Like, I got one shot. We, you and I have one shot to do this. And I want to do it right. So we're going to pause there, and I'm going to ask a couple questions.